What happened to your head? <laughs> My head or Joel's head? <laughs> your head, Colin. What happened uh, to your head? <laughs> oh yes. Well, I I got my all my hair cut. If you're watching at home, it's uh, it's refreshing. Why? Why would you do such a thing? I was just it done was with good. It. I had had my long hair for like eight or nine years, maybe even ten. I and, know. And I was just tired of it. It got to be too much, so I cut it all off. The election had you so down. You shaved your head. You're wearing black. Like it's just. <laughs> Yeah, well, He's going full G.I. Jane right now. I was wearing black long before the election. <laughs> okay. Colin, have you, been, have you been doing this move, like trying to flick your totally. hair? Oh, I've yeah. been trying oh, to yeah. touch my ponytail for days now. Uh, uh -huh. So uh -huh. that's... Were that's you able to like fun. donate or anything? Yeah. No, that's the whole reason I grew it out so long is because I wanted to donate it. So I'm going to donate it to a children's organization who makes wigs for kids. That's awesome. Yeah, awesome. All right. sure. yeah you you're so funny. very handsome. You're yeah. so very beautiful. It looks short so hair. Good. Thanks, and so and you you did it for a good cause and good for you, man. Thank you. I like it. I like. Do you want to hear something I, funny? Feels good. Mm, free. Uh, it funny. looks good. It looks good. I I was going to get my hair cut, and I walked in. And I was you know checking in at the front, and I hear Joel, and I look over and I see <laughs> Mr. Colin over there sitting on the couch getting ready, but he had yeah. just. Your your wife had just done like the rough chop, yes. So, I it took my oh. brain, you know, probably four seconds to figure out what was going on and who you were, no. and then I was like, oh my god, it's so he he had like the spiky, just like you already took the wig hair away, and you just had like the remnants left. Yeah, I looked legitimately yeah. insane because of the way <laughs> my wife cut all my hair off. You look like someone uh, that stuck a fork in an outlet. You're yeah. like, help me. <laughs> Kind of, yeah. I had like this really gross, <laughs> uneven rat tail sticking out the back. I put a hat on because I was like, Ooh, I can't go out. Should have kept that. Like it was a rat tail. <laughs> rat nice, tail absolutely. <laughs> hey, how long did your haircut take? Uh, like I don't know, forty-five minutes. Forty-five minutes is a pretty long time. You could listen to a full episode of Stop Wasting Your Wine in forty-five minutes. You could do that. You could listen to a full yeah. episode. You could also listen to the new supplemental episode that we're going to start oh. dropping every Thursday called but did they like it which is going to be just wow. the review wow. wait so what Fantastic if so what if my idea. hair can only takes like 15 minutes yeah yeah that would be perfect because usually the oh. review this is the wine discussion and review only take about 15 20 minutes so that would be wow. that, that was a that did, was did you see that seamless that, that was really seamless good. segue it into was. the actual point of our yeah so so That's we're gonna really have good. we're going to start releasing a new segment of our show. Now, if you enjoy the games and the banter and us talking about Colin's hair and my elbow and all that fun stuff, the Tom uh, Foolery. Please, by all means, the Tom yeah, Foolery. Yeah, if you enjoy the, the Tom show. Foolery, yeah. You know, please continue listening to the show on Tuesdays. But if you also want a quick review, by all means, listen to both. But if you just want to hear a quick <laughs> review of a wine and just be like, oh, is it something I should grab? Uh, Colin, on Thursdays? Thursdays, yes. Every Thursday we'll be dropping. Again, it's going to call it. But did they like it? Which, if you listen to the show, you know is the drop into the the review. Yes. Yeah. So just a quick, you know, is it good? Should I get it? Pick it up real quick. And this is going to be right. dropping on 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 YouTube, Spotify, just everywhere, everywhere that you yeah. listen. Everywhere wow. you listen. Everywhere you listen. That's fantastic. If you stand in the middle of the field and you just yeah. stand silently and listen closely, mm -hmm. you'll hear the episode just kind of like rustle through oh, the wow. wind. <laughs> yeah. That's. Yeah. That's good reach. We're everywhere. Right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, we're doing great. 2024, baby. <laughs> Welcome to Stop Wasting Your Wine, a wine review podcast where we waste our wine so you don't have to. On this episode, we review a white wine from South Africa. Welcome back, everyone. It is the second week in November, and I am joined by two of the most delightful people I know, Colin and Joel. How you guys doing? I'm hanging in there. Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, folks, not going to hide the ball on this one. If you listened to our last episode, you knew we were all very optimistic and sunny and excited uh, about the prospect of welcoming uh, the first woman president uh, to the United States, and that did not happen. And so, you know, Wait, we're going to keep... Yeah. I know. I know your your uh, process is to hide for a week, yeah. so welcoming yeah. you into the light. Um, but this Thanks. is where we are. You know, we just 
we support people's individual rights over their own bodies and, you know, making their own choices. And so we're going to keep, we're going to keep fighting the good fight. And in the meantime, you know, we're going to keep, keep drinking the good wine. together and talking about what we need to talk about. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. Love it. Yeah. So we, no. we pulled ourselves out of our emotional support blankets today yeah. uh, to record this episode. <laughs> so that being said, wow, there's so much to talk about. We are a wine review and in wine oh, education yes. show. And so, you know, right. we just want to name if there's a little funk, why it's there. But we also want to just keep doing what we do, which is finding those affordable wines, talking about them, and also getting us ready for the holidays and everything that's coming up because yes. it is it is wine season. I don't know if it's called wine uh, season, but it is it is wine season. It is here. It, it is. is on this show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Next big holiday. Thanksgiving. I mean, that is Thanks, the wine yeah. holiday. Giving. Right? Crazy. The people mm -hmm. who never buy a bottle of wine to show up at a friend's house show up with a bottle of wine on Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's so true. And if you need or... any recommendations, I know a good podcast to get some of those recommendations. You know, check out Agreed. some of our previous episodes. Mm -hmm. We got some bangers. Yeah. I was going to say, too, you, you mentioned this being like the one time that people, you know, if you don't drink wine, you go out and you buy a bottle of wine. This is also, it made me think of that bottle of wine that was always sitting in like the outside refrigerator that like mom would go yeah. grab before the thanksgiving dinner for crazy uncle who's coming over that's been like the sutter home that's been in the yeah. back of the fridge for a year because we did isn't this it the bottle i brought last year <laughs> exactly. what? No, i just liked it so much i got it a bunch more times 100 percent. yeah no this is like as i became a, a fake adult and i was like going to <laughs> thanksgiving events not with my mom and dad like i'm like oh we need to stop and get a bottle of wine i guess like you don't want to show up with like a six pack of bud light like maybe some ipas or something but then you're the only person you can get a bottle of wine so we're in we're in wine season we are yes. indeed. i love that yeah yeah 100 yeah. yeah. so so hopefully if you're a long time listener to the show you you know there's been a bunch of really good 30 dollars less bottles of wine especially red wines you can grab uh yeah. but we hope to unlock a few more before the holidays yeah no, for sure. Go back through the catalog, and then I think we have, yeah, what do we have, another two weeks here? Week or two? Mm -hmm. Late Thanksgiving this year, guys, so we can squeeze in another another review and hopefully good recommendation for everybody over the next couple of weeks. So maybe we can make that our mission. Yeah, yeah let's let's do that. Next couple of weeks, we do Thanksgiving ones. That'll be our challenge, yeah. to find good get a little, Thanksgiving ones. A little Beaujolais Maybe we here. do like a Ooh, little Beaujolais. Yeah. Yeah. Some yeah. Syrah would be nice. Ooh, with some yeah. fresh Syrah with little. that turkey would be delightful. I like that little I mean, gamma. We have we also we haven't done like a sparkling in a while. Like maybe do we want to get something in there if you're sure, you know, popping yeah. a cork with the family? I don't know. There's so many options. So many I think that's a great idea. Look at us figuring out our next month's worth of episodes <laughs> yeah. with our listener. Not every podcast for being does with us this, on this people. journey. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you have rec if you have recommendations, send them our way so we can give you <laughs> recommendations if you could recommend to us. Yeah. yeah. Recommendations. Hey, no, but of last week's episode. Was a recommendation great from recommendation. James Walker, and that worked out great. That was a delightful bottle of wine. So we have a great episode ahead for you. We're going to get into this white wine uh, from South Africa. We're going to give it a little initial taste, initial smell. We're going to talk uh, a little bit about Shannon Block. Colin's going to teach us about that grape. We're going to do a little pick your poison, and then we're going to give you a final review. So lots to do. But before we like dive in. Episode. It does doesn't it? Like it's yeah. exciting. Yeah. Now, if you just want the review, you can pick that up uh, oh, a couple of days later. That's right. But Thursday. if you want to stick around for all the other good stuff, Joel, why don't you tell us what we're drinking today? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so we mentioned we were drinking a white wine from South Africa. So today we are drinking the Blauklippen 2023 what? Blauklippen. Well that was good. Thank you. Blauklippen. Yeah. Blauklippen. 2023 Blau Shannon Clippen. Blanc, and this is from Stellenbosch in South Africa. This has an ABV of 13.5%, and we picked this up from Total Wine for $18. By the way, we're drinking a 2023 tonight. This mm -hmm. place has been around since 1682, so that's wow. a long time to perfect some winemaking, so really have some kind of high expectations here. That's crazy. Yeah that's, yeah, that's really cool. I mean, I know we talked a little bit about the history of, of Stellenbosch and the whole kind of like colonial time German wine making in South Africa and just tons of history there. These places have been around forever. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of wow. that's kind of cool to see that date on there. Yeah. Uh, but Colin, you picked this out for us. Why would you do such a thing? <laughs> 
<laughs> that sounded super negative. Um, Why have it. you blessed us with this wine? There we go. Yes, there we very go. nice. <laughs> well, I chose, I chose this, what I hope to be the lovely bottle of wine, because one, it's Chenin Blanc, and we haven't done Chenin Blanc yet, which is absolutely insane. On the list of grapes that aren't that popular, this definitely takes my favorite spot. It's normally high acid grapes. It's got a lot of really cool fruit flavors, kind of right up my alley. So I wanted to bring a Shannon on to the show, and then I chose the Stellenbosch. I chose this bottle specifically. I really wanted to go to France and pick out a bottle of uh, French Chenin Blanc, but the options at Total Wine, to be totally honest, weren't great, especially mm. in our price range. They had some more expensive ones from mm. some of the more well-known French regions, but they didn't really have anything that caught my eye under 30. So. I went to a different region, different country, and if you're not drinking Chenin Blanc from France, that one of the next best places is South Africa. So I figured, give it a shot and see what this kind of wine from this region brings to the table. So that's interesting. That might be less of a, a total wine issue and more of just a Chenin Blanc coming out of France and what the general price range is for that versus Chenin Blanc coming out of other regions. Yeah, I think it's a popularity thing too. I mean, when you know, you're, you're looking at a wine list, Chenin Blanc is definitely not towards the top, which is crazy because I don't think I've seen it on a wine list at any of the places I go to. None of the chilies I've been to have had it. <laughs> yeah, no, probably, probably not. But it's a really cool grape. Again, one of my favorites, and I look forward to getting into this one. Cool, cool, cool. Well, that's exciting. Well, before we start learning a little bit more about it and before we get into any of our games, let's give it an initial initial swirl, an initial yes. smell, and see what we're getting. <laughs> Uh, okay. Tastes like wine. So, reminder once again, this is this is an eighteen dollar bottle of wine. So we're once again hoping to find a, a diamond in the rough here. Joe, why don't you start us off? What are you getting on the nose? All right. So it's very nice. So I'm getting a little bit of fruit peeking out there. Little citrusy. Little like honeysuckleness. Like there's a very soft ness in there that i'm picking up on but yeah that's kind of that and like a little little lemon that's about it <laughs> yeah, you, you keep saying like a little citrusy and yeah to me it's like a lot citrusy i'm getting like I don't know. a lot of that lemony and then like yeah like green apple mm -hmm. good call i like that well done yeah, yeah. no that's really yeah good. i would say absolutely green apple i think it's a great call i would also say and this is really front of mind because I had a guava pastry for dessert today. I uh, went to a little Cuban spot and I had a guava pastry. But I'm kind of getting guava out of here. It kind of is very similar to the the dessert I had this evening. So it's you guava. I can see that no. since you've said it. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah, a little a little tropical fruit in there. But I also think the, the yes. lemon is a really good call. And then I would also throw in some minerality. I think I'm getting out of yeah. there. Look, man, I'm so unrefined. If you put a guava a guava and gua a guava in a lineup like i could not pick it out like, no that's funny i don't what know too is, what much is about, guava i don't know too much about guava either i just know that guava pastries are some of the best desserts so ever they're just so good <laughs> so Noted. that's the only reason go to a nice cuban place aaron and pick yourself up a guava pastry and it'll blow your mind i, I gotta be honest I, I, in order to make sure that that is, is a good experience i'm gonna wait until i go back down to florida to go to a yeah, cuban place that's not good idea. sure <laughs> what the Cuban scene is like here in Jersey. Don't come at me if there is a Cuban scene in Jersey that I don't know about people, but it's not not where I'm from. You want to be That's in Tampa, fair. you want to be in Miami, yeah, maybe yeah. Orlando. We got, some, yeah. we got some good Cuban food here, I'll tell you what. Yeah. All right, so we got uh, some green apple, we got citrus, we got some honeysuckle, mm -hmm. we got some guava. Anything else in the nose, gentlemen, before we, we take some sips? I think we nailed it. That's pretty good. Pretty good. All right, Let's see what we got. Colin, you want to take all the good ones first? Yeah, I think we're definitely getting some of that lemon. I think that's absolutely yeah. coming through. Aaron, I think green apple was a great call. I think you get a little bit of that tropical fruit, not too much. It's definitely not one of the major players, but I think it kind of plays with the lemon pretty well. You guys have anything else? For structure side, like I really like the acidity. It's like super acidic. Super it's acidic. really, especially with like the citrusy stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like I am puckering. While, while yeah. I'm sipping, you know, while I'm yeah. sipping on this, it's just like, yeah, um, which is making me drink more. So, excellent <laughs> yeah. product design. Yes, indeed. 
I want to commend you on the guava call out. I think that's a little bit more prevalent here. Also, I think the minerality really shining Definitely. through here. Yeah, for sure. Yep. 100%. And it's it's so acidic. This is definitely high mm -hmm. acid. There's no doubt about that. But I think it works. I don't think yeah. you know it's it's terribly offensive. Although it is like just an acid punch to the face, <laughs> you know. Which some people don't like Shannon because it is so high in acid. But you know, in this wine, I think it works. Just like the overall structure, like says acidity. Like for a white wine, it is a slightly higher alcohol level for a white wine at thirteen point five. It is. I think like a, a good bodied wine, like I'm enjoying the overall like, experience of it. I think it's pretty, pretty well balanced across the board. I don't want an answer right now. I just want to plant the seed. I want it to grow in your heads. And I want you to consider this over the next 20 minutes. This is a guava plant. Well, is this, is this a CPP? That's what I want to plant the seed. I don't want an answer. Okay. I just want right. to plant the seed and let you think about it. Also, is it is it dry AF? I I think we can put the dry AF stamp on it. Can we just we haven't dry F in a while? But. It's definitely dry, but I think it feels Ooh, even more dry AF. because that no, I would it's it's dry AF for sure. I mean, there's yeah, no, there's no <laughs> I'm gonna use my stickers in a while. <laughs> give, dry let's just AF, give dry. Aaron, yeah, yeah, we we'll give it to Aaron. They're like yeah. they're getting dust. Bullshit. This like, oh, it's such a good sticker, and we haven't referenced it in a really long time. Yeah. Dry yeah, F. It is, a, it is a fun sticker. There's no doubt. <laughs> but you say, so you think it, put it, stop it, wasting it, your wine on our dry AF sticker? No, it's at the bottom. My fingers are on it. Oh, okay, perfect. That's oh, stop wine. <laughs> okay. All right. Guys, we, we, we looked at the sticker designs for way too long. We did not miss we anything. Did. <laughs> like, we did. They went through 18 iterations. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you're saying, you're saying the acidity is so high, it is making the dryness maybe yeah, feel think, more dry than I think so and I think they're kind of playing off of each other because there's no sugar in here and usually sugar is mm -hmm. the being a dry wine sugar is kind of the balancing act to acidity and because there is none of that they both kind of stick out quite a bit you know it, it definitely yeah. is very yeah. dry and very acidic and you can absolutely feel both of those things as you taste this for sure yeah and I gotta say it is so dry and it's so acidic and it's making me continue to drink it and pour more glasses because I am just starving for hydration and it is not helping me because it's just making it worse. All right, guys. So I think that's a really good first shot at this. A lot of interesting smells, a lot of interesting tastes. We're not going to say how we feel about it yet. We're going to keep on moving. Mm -hmm. We'll check it out one more time at the end of the show before we land our final review. So that being said, I hear you talking about this Chenin Blanc. That is not something that I have ever heard of before. Colin, can you teach us something? This is the only thing you will learn. Yeah, so I want to talk a little bit about Chenin Blanc because it's the first one we've had. So I figured a little bit of knowledge might help us better enjoy this one. So I'm going to do the five things you need to know about Chenin Ooh. Blanc. The first thing you need to know about Chenin Blanc, it is an incredibly versatile grape. And you can find Chenin Blanc in all sorts of styles. Do you want oak to Chenin Blanc? They got it. You want un oak Chenin Blanc like we're drinking tonight? They got it. Sparkling, got it. Sweet, got it. So there's really a Chenin Blanc for every wine drinker out there. You just have to kind of seek them out. It, it's a really cool grape in that aspect because you can try so many styles, and they're all so incredibly different. So that's cool if you want to seek out some cool and interesting different styles of the same grape. The second I appreciate thing you had, naming like the oak aspect too because the back of the bottle talks about how this is fermented in stainless steel barrels. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about like oaked versus not oaked, it's like, okay, that's like a very intentional aspect of this wine. Yes, absolutely. The second thing you need to know, this is a French grape, historically French, which is why I wanted to try it out of France, like I mentioned earlier. And some of the regions you want to look out for are Vouvray, which makes some absolute world-class Chenin Blanc. The interesting thing out of there, a lot of times you'll find off-dry Chenin Blanc. There are very few that I've seen that are 100% dry just because of the region and how the grapes are grown. So, but just incredible. The the balance with the little bit of sugar that's in there and the screaming acid really makes some fantastic wines. And then Sauvignon is another region to look out for in France. And these are both going to be in the Loire Valley. So look out for the Loire. Oh, wow. <laughs> right. Throwback. Well done. Yeah, yeah <laughs> really well done. Um, I'm learning. Third thing you need to know 
and we've covered this a little bit, but Chenin Blanc is known for its absolutely ripping acidity. So if you know some absolute acid heads out there who haven't tried Chenin Blanc, this is one for them. And I still think we need to make an acid head sticker. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we could do that for sure. Do it. Do, do it. it. Do it. And actually, the acidity in younger wines leads to that kind of freshness, but it also allows some of the more serious wines the potential to age. So you can actually, and this goes back to its versatility, you can actually find some really interesting aged Chenin Blancs, which not all white wines can age. So we're in South Africa. So fourth thing you need to know about Chenin Blanc, especially out of South Africa, you'll also see it called Steen in South Africa. Ooh. Yeah. Which is, I don't know if you'll see that on exported bottles or that's just kind of what they call it um, between winemakers and in, in the local markets. But that's definitely something to look out for. I don't think it's on this bottle. But if you ever see Pretty it on cool a bottle, though. now you know that Steen is also Chenin Blanc. Huh. Yep. And it's actually become one of the more important grapes of South Africa just because it, as far as plantings are concerned, it's, it's one of the, the largest planted grapes in South Africa. So, um, my brain always cool goes straight to Pinotage when we think of yeah. South Africa. Yeah. yeah. Yo, Which, uh, can't wait for your Pinotage redemption episode. It's, it's coming, coming any minute now. It's coming. It's coming. Any minute now. Yeah. I'm looking. I was Don't worry say, about that. I was going to say that automatically leads me to sadness. So I try not to think about <laughs> Pinotage too much. <laughs> I'm going to redeem it. Go on. Yeah. All right. <laughs> And the fifth and final thing you need to know about Chenin Blanc is, and this kind of ties back into its versatility, but it can have a pretty wide range of flavors based on the style and what the winemaker is doing with the wine. We, we called out some here. I think green apple is a great call. You see that a lot. Pear, the honey, you, sometimes you'll see some floral notes in there as well. And then in warmer climates, you can see some tropical fruits like pineapple and guava which is super interesting. And you can actually find some of those tertiary flavors if this one, if the wine ages, so some of those more nutty flavors, maybe some of those those oak influence notes. So there, there's so much that can come out of this wine and it can be so complex and so interesting. It's definitely a grape worth exploring. And that's what you need to know about Chenin Blanc. Very, very cool. Love learning about new grapes. I'd say new region, but we have learned about this region before. Con, to refresh one more time, teacher and mm -hmm. me, super fast, 10 seconds or less, mm -hmm. what are the three most important things you want people to know about Shannon Block? Go. Uh, versatile grape can come in a whole bunch of different styles with a bunch of different flavor profiles. Super high acid. If you love acid, this is wine for you. And try them in both France and out of South Africa as they're both huge players in those wine scenes. Wow. Love it. Thank well you done. so much. Love learning something new. I feel slightly smarter every single day. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. You are. All right. <laughs> I mean, it's not that hard. Uh, cool, cool, cool. All right. Well, that was, we learned something. So now we have to have fun. You know, that's how it works. We, we did a little intellectual work. Now let's do the opposite. Let's play a little pick your poison. Mm. Pick your poison. I, pa pick I your pause poison. like there's a pick your poison pa 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 Pick your poison. <laughs> we all felt the I, same thing. I believe we just got our pick your poison drop. I just gave you one. Yeah. Thank you, Joel. You're welcome. Pick your poison. Pick, pick, pick your poison. Pick your poison. We did it. <laughs> all right. So for new listeners, pick your poison is pretty much would you rather but you know it's our version of it because it's a wine show so we're gonna say pick your poison and we're gonna give uh each other two options and it's you know which one would you rather deal with do you guys mind if i if i start us off no, by please. all means please that would be cool. i'll just i'll delightful. just get the the wheels the do wheels it. turning spin them all right by example all right here we go <laughs> i thought of a Slightly complicated one to follow okay. along with me. You got it? Okay. All right. Pick your poison. Mm -hmm. You have access to any wine in the world at half price. Mm -hmm. Or you have access to any wine in the world for free, but someone else always picks it for you. And that person might not know anything about wine. Okay. I feel like that last part makes a huge difference because yeah. if I had a sommelier picking out my wine, <laughs> I'm going that one 100% of the time, right? But if mm -hmm. if this is just mm -hmm. like Joe Schmo down the street, it's just 
It's a Reddit poster being like, this is your next one. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going, you know what? I'm, I'm going to gamble. I'm going with a random guy picking wine because why not, right? Because at the end of the free. day, it's always free and like you're still not drinking top tier wines because a $3,000 bottle of wine goes to what, $1,500? Who cares? That doesn't help me at all. I'm still not drinking that bottle of wine. So, you know, let's gamble. Let's gamble. Okay. I don't, I don't even have to think about this one. Just bring me... Bring me all the wines. I'll go through so many terrible wines. I don't care. I will find the good ones. I'll find the diamond in the rough. And it's not costing me anything to get to those. Sign me up, man. That's great. Yeah. I don't care who's. It can be Joe Schmo. I don't. I don't care. Bring it. Bring it, Jeff. And no surprise, I'm with you on this. I yeah. would. I'm just stoked about free wine. My one fear of the scenario is I'm sitting at a restaurant and I look at a menu and I see some wines that are excellent. And then, like, you know, Paul from oh. like three tables down is like, you get barefoot. You're like, oh, that's I true. Anything. I didn't think about the situational part of that, where like there's one that you want and you can't pick it for yourself. It's not yeah, changing you get my no answer, saying it, just, but yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, <laughs> you you open up your fridge to pull out a bottle of wine, and some stranger runs by and hands you a different bottle. Nope, you're drinking this one. <laughs> <laughs> This is this this scenario isn't like logistically this is, uh, feasible, but I don't know if you know this, but uh, New Jersey's <laughs> uh, one of the most uh, up and coming uh, wine regions in the states. So here, I brought you this. First of all, watch your mouth and watch your accent. It is one of the up and coming wine regions in the world. And I posted about this the other day. Someone handed me a you know a local locally made bottle of wine the other day, and it was delightful and nice. probably 30 percent alcohol it, oh, was, wow. it, was, okay. it was it was it was it was it was tasty and oh my god all right so that was mine i don't think that was my best but that was fun uh which you guys got one here's mine i thought of this one the other day and i was like oh i'm gonna save this pick your poison never have access to a car for the rest of your life i'm talking you don't own one you're not in an uber no cars or cars for the rest of your life but you get stopped at every single red light and i'm talking you see it go from yellow to red not the you you slow down to coast and it goes green and you can go through i'm saying you stop and you wait for that light go i hate this i hate that you put this upon me <laughs> i hate this because as someone with kids i cannot see a world where I don't have a car. If I was just a, a single man, I'd be like, that's yeah. fine. I'm going to ride my buck everywhere. Like I'll take, you know, a, I, can I, I, can I pay for a bus ticket? I don't know. But like there's 0% chance I can exist without a car. So I, I guess I am just leaving my house an hour earlier when okay. I go everywhere now because of your curse that you put upon me. That's fair. Yeah. I, I actually, this question triggers me on an incredibly oh. deep level because <laughs> as somebody who has a 45 minute drive to work every day those days uh -huh. i catch the lights my drive turns into an hour and 20 minute drive Ooh. so like and i'm just there's so many getting heated there's so many lights <laughs> in between <laughs> my house and where i work if i were to hit yeah. every single light, it just like i can't and it just i i can't do it i can't do it granted what aaron said makes a lot of sense with two kids i can't not have a car <laughs> there's just there's just no way around that so from that aspect but i would just be you want to see some road rage just follow me around because yeah, yeah. Uh, rose the hair back puts I, it up in a bandana and just i get goes to that nuts. i get to that 10th light that i have to stop at and i am just i am ready to drive Oof. that car <laughs> through the nearest stoplight <laughs> What if you could take the bus in the in the former one? What if you could take the bus, but you don't have a car? That's the only thing that you get. So it's bus. If I still lived in the city, I would then choose the bus. Yeah. If yeah, I still I lived the bus. in the city. I just, but, I, yeah. That just lugging two kids around on a bus, yeah. it just, it's unfeasible. Fair enough. I'm taking red lights 
for the rest of my life. I'm routing everything with as many right turns and interstates as I possibly can. That's my plan. <laughs> That's thing, right? Like when I, when I think about it, my actual when I drive to work, there aren't that many red lights. When I when I'm driving uh, from New Jersey to New York City, it's just like one light highway for a very long time, and then I'm in see? the city. Or normally I take the train. So like this is doable. Yeah. But oh, no. <laughs> I have a red light every six feet. It feels uh, like every I drive intersection a... is a is a light. Yeah. I take a train across state lines and I get to work faster than you call. <laughs> like, yeah. Wild. I don't doubt that. It is wild. move to New York, baby. That's mm. no, I'm not gonna do that, but Wow. God. Okay, well this is a side note. All right, Colin, Colin, what's yours? Yeah, so mine's a little more wine related. And by that I mean it's totally wine related. Um so a hundred percent more wine related. hundred percent more wine. That's right. Uh, <laughs> so would you rather only be able to drink wine that pairs well with food? So every meal you're gonna have a great glass of wine with it, or would you rather only drink wine that only drinks well by itself, so it tastes gross with food. Like, if you have food in that glass oh. of wine, it's going to be just an absolute awful experience. So you go in good drinkers by themselves or good food wine. If I drink the food wine by itself, is it then bad? Yes. It, it's only good uh, That's right. Yep. If you drink uh, it by itself, it's gross. This is magic wine. I hate it. Um, <laughs> it's a bummer because drinking wine is such like a – cool part of like eating food right like i just having that you know what i'm going with the food wine just carrying a bag of popcorn with me all the time <laughs> that's the move that is exactly that's the move mark. that's what i was gonna I say need food <laughs> food wine and just that. always eating yeah 100 yeah. <laughs> percent. i like that no that's a good twist joel is that, that your final answer oh yeah yeah as soon as you said it i was like i know this yeah <laughs> yeah bag of pretzels <laughs> ziploc bag of pretzels in my pocket at all time no problem yeah, save I, my wine i think i'm gonna go the opposite route on this one because i don't really Ooh. i don't usually drink with dinner you know even though i know yeah. how good it can be it's just not something i usually do at least at home of course when i go out but even when i go out i usually have a cocktail or something like that so uh, yeah. I think I'm just going wine by itself because that's how I usually drink wine as it is right now. So, see, I wouldn't want to miss the opportunity to like play with whatever weird wine plague was on me and just eat like the weirdest combination <laughs> of stuff <laughs> and then be like, all right, what are you going to pair with this? Twix and whatever yeah. sardines. And this wine is great it with carrots. That'd be amazing. Yeah. Like tuna fish sandwich has never been so good. <laughs> yeah. No, you're right. That is that is a lot more fun. You're right. No, but that was that that question hit a lot harder than I thought it was going to because when you know when when you first said I was like oh yeah just wine by itself but I think back to like when Ashwin was on and just like kind of like the cultural importance of just like drinking wine with people and with food and around the table and, and just like the thought of like not being able to do that just was like yeah kind of sad totally yeah. totally For sure yeah. get you thinking yeah way to go. You know what? Right. And I'll and that's why before. we play Pick Your Poison. That's why we play Pick Your Poison, and that's why I'm always so glad when we walk away from these things. I'm glad we don't live in that world. We get to do both in all of these scenarios. Yeah. We create this wine hellscape, and yeah. then we leave. <laughs> it was a step away. That's right. Step that's away right. from the wine hellscape into our what is totally not a, a real oh, life God. hellscape. Oh, all right. I've forgotten. Damn it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> hey, all least... right. You've had 50 minutes of fun. That's true. Yeah. 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 We have not thought about the events of this week and then the next four years. Um, okay, cool. So before we get into our review, let's just give this one more smell, one more sip, see if anything else has kind of popped out in the last like 15 minutes of fun time. Now, I imagine this wait time is probably a lot more important when we do reds than, than this. Reds but, and, who knows? you know, like oaked long. whites, heavier whites. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think this wine has changed too much honestly i think it's no. about the same as it was it hasn't gotten any better hasn't gotten any worse i think it has gotten a little less cold i took mine right out of the fridge um, <laughs> as as they do <laughs> sure but i think i kind of like thermodynamics it has older. taken place in the last 25 minutes mm -hmm. um, <laughs> no my point there was you I did you did it like it when it was colder, it was colder. Yes. i know yeah cold. totally we're just yeah. being jerks no at the engineer down here wants to uh, <laughs> toss in the, the terms. Hey, did it sound cool when I said thermodynamics, guys? 
it, cool? it sounded accurate. Okay. I believe you. I believe you 100%. No, I think that's a good call. Anything, I, like, I'm not getting anything new popping out on the nose or, or, or in the taste. No, I don't think so. No, but I'll tell you, I just, I, I, I enjoyed, I shocked myself at how much I enjoyed that sip again. <laughs> well, then let's pop into the review. Yeah, but did they like it? It's time for the review. Gentlemen, we have tried this bottle of wine. Which one of you feel the most confident in reminding our viewer and listener what we are drinking? Joel did such a good job in the open. Let's go back to Joel. <laughs> Joel, what are we drinking? So as a reminder to the listener at home, we have been drinking and I think enjoying and are about to review the Blau Klippen Chenin Blanc from 2023. This is from Stellenbosch, South Africa. Okay. So that's what we have in front of us. Set you back $18, that mm -hmm. big, big money. Uh, how do we feel about it? Colin, since this was your wine, you'll go last. Joel, why don't you start us off? How are you feeling? Yeah, good. I'm feeling good about it. Good. But I think that's that's pretty much good. my review. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, it's it's yeah. like uh it's good. I and I it's you know interesting because I keep thinking about the counter which is like our it's fine counter and I think that this is a little better than it's fine. Like I think it's good. So I am going to go ahead and put this Chenin Blanc on the kitchen table. I wouldn't say that it's one that I'm going to like, as soon as a friend comes over, I have to share with them and I have to show them because this is going to blow your mind. But it's really enjoyable, really solid, fun to talk about. I think, you know, this is one of those ones where like when I first started smelling it and drinking it, I wasn't getting too much. And then you guys started talking about things and I was finding these things in there. So mm -hmm. there was some complexity that was fun to explore. So... All in all, really enjoyable wine. Put it on the kitchen table. Yeah, I think I'm with you on that one in like the situational sense, right? It's a situational kitchen table. It's like, a am I bringing this to a housewarming party like and showing it off? No. But if I want to bring something a little bit unique or I know the person's really into acidic wines or I want to bring something from South Africa or talk about that this uh, vineyard is, you know, over 300 and 50 years old or, or whatever it is like there there's enough going on here mm -hmm. with this wine and this history that i think it's interesting and, and also at the price point like just grabbing it and having yeah. it seems pretty good to me i think it is slightly better than a wine that i would just you know keep around the house and drink um yeah so i agree with you i, I think it's a kitchen table wine it's it's a it's a great wine for what it is colin yeah i'm right there with you i was flopping between the the front of the counter or the back of the kitchen table mm -hmm. i think it you can put it e either spot and it would be fine but like joel said it's really tasty like it's it's not terribly complex but there are a couple things going on in there you know it's definitely not towards the front of the kitchen table i'm going to end up putting yeah. this one on the kitchen table with you guys but it's just really enjoyable and if you like high acid white wine I think yep. this is definitely worth the eighteen dollars. I mean, I think this one, as far as value is concerned, I think you get eighteen dollars yeah. out of this. I don't. You're not getting thirty out of this. You're not getting even twenty five. But I think for an eighteen dollar bottle of wine, this is a, a, a great bottle for that price. So uh, I'm putting it on the kitchen table with you guys. On the stop wasting your wine scale, though, you know, oh. this is a stop wasting your wine eighteen dollar eighteen dollar bottle of wine. And you know, yeah. this might also be like you know us, I mean? like kind of refining <laughs> our scale. Because the the more I think about it, it's like the kitchen counter isn't bad. Our definition of the kitchen counter is it's like it's fine and I would drink it around the house. Like I would just like pour a glass of, you know, that wine when I'm, you know, just hanging out or watching TV or, you know, doing dishes. And this kind of does fall in that category for me. So it does. This is kind of like in our very non-scientific way, like kind of waffling between the counter and the, and the, and the kitchen table for me. Yeah, I would say it's a little bit better than fine. You know, I think yeah. it's good. Like, I'm actually, I'm enjoying it quite a bit Finer. more <laughs> than I would say at fine. You know, fine would just be like, I'm just going to pour it and not have to think about it. But, you know, this yeah. I'm actually enjoying. Fine to me is just kind of passable as exactly. opposed to, you know, this is actually enjoyable. So that's that's why yeah. ultimately it's ending up on the, the table. To, to me, the, the count, not to, you know, belabor it more, but to me, the counter is like, it makes you feel nothing good or bad sure. it's just there yeah. 
It's you just know, wine. it's wine. It's there. Yeah. And I need a glass it. of wine. That's that's not this. Yep. This is this is fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Totally. Totally. And I and I think too, especially when we just talk about the price point as well. We're talking about eighteen dollars. We're talking yeah. about just grabbing something and having it. Like it's it's a good in that category a, a good wine to grab so that's you know that's what we're trying to illuminate here on, on stop wasting yes. your wine Indeed. you know clearly not a waste of your wine if you want mm-hmm. to spend 18 bucks mm-hmm. if you're running total wine or whatever other company you have near you that carries this grab it it's a good one to have so it's, a, it's yep. a good one to talk about especially if you like wines that are dry af because this one is <laughs> definitely and let me go back i planted the seed earlier you what did. do we think, guys? Is this we got a CPP here? Uh, no, I don't know. It feels too dry. It feels too, too acidic, too dry. Like I'd be on the porch and I'd be dead. Yeah, I don't. It's like it's almost there for me, but it doesn't quite hit good. on the crushable level. You know, That's like fair. I don't, I don't want to just sit here and crush yeah. this wine. Okay. The, the, <laughs> as we've all pretty much crushed it yeah. the, the, da- the data is uh, pushing against the anecdote <laughs> okay so That's maybe for Aaron it is a CPP I don't know so I'd be no, okay I'm either with way you. I, could, I could see it going one way or the other it doesn't scream CPP like some of the wines we've had in the past I am with you I just took another sip and it made me think a little too much for it to be mm-hmm. a CPP mm-hmm. you know? sure. so yes I'm with yep. you I like to I, like Look, to I just go question. back to the I go back to the six dollar bottles of like Vino Verde that I have like stockpiled in my in my pantry down here. Yes. That was just yes. like crisp and bright and like medium acidic and six dollars. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that is, you know, the I'm just holding the bottle on on my on my porch. So, yeah. you know, or, or so yeah. So I I agree that it's like good and 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 I would, I'll say this, I would drink this outside. I would drink this at a barbecue or, or just sitting outside, but I don't think this is my go-to. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Fair. Fair. Yeah. But good bang for your buck. Yeah. Not a waste of your wine. Try it. The, I, I'm, we don't normally say it this many times, but I want to say it. The Black Clippin, uh from Stellenbosch, Chenin Blanc. So that was like three different languages all in two sentences. And we say go ahead and grab it if you like high acidic white wine. So... Gentlemen, excellent episode. We learned some stuff. We played some games. We found a what I think is a diamond in the rough for you know eighteen bucks for for a uh, good wine. Anything else you guys want to add? Any any shout outs? Remember uh, this Thursday, but did they like it? Re- oh, wine talk wow. and review only. Yeah. Check it out yeah. wherever you listen to this podcast. Really? Yeah, and if you already listened to this episode and and you want to hear how we splice it all up, and you just want to give us an extra listen. Please just go ahead Thursday morning, just you know, fifteen minutes. Why not? Play it while you're in the shower, whatever. <laughs> All right. Ooh, who am I gonna toss to? Toss you. If you'd like to interact with us more, we'll be setting up our calendar for the next few months. We'd love to have some new guests on our show. Joel. Yeah. How can folks interact with our show moving forward? Oh my gosh. Stop wasting your wine. Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Check it out. That's it. Those are the places. And then, of course, wherever you're listening to the us, website that you update, stop wasting your wine. Stop wasting com. Com. So much fun over there. And listen, wherever you're listening to us, Spotify, Apple, we don't care. Just give us a mm. like if you haven't already. We'd appreciate it. Yeah. And please follow, follow, like, you know, when someone leaves a review, it actually bumps us up in the algorithm mm. for other people. So oh. you can help us out if you've been listening uh, and you can <laughs> review our show. That actually helps out. Joel, thank you so much. You're welcome, buddy. And most importantly, thank you, listeners. We appreciate you so much. Like we said at the beginning, we have a whole bunch of good content coming your way, a whole lot of reviews going into this holiday season, but we can't wait to get into it with you. So until next time, Joel. <laughs> and remember, stop wasting your wine. <laughs> you, don't usually, Bye, you don't usually TV up for it. <laughs> I know, but it felt right. I love it. It felt right. Bye.